Hello. So I've had a request and this bedtime story, this reading is going to be slightly different. It's going to be a little bit whispered rather than spoken or soft spoken, I could say. <laughs> and it's going to go like this. It's going to be from this book that I've already used previously <laughs> and has very good information, by the way. And I'm going to read you a, a short chapter. I need to check the distance. I think I don't need these ones because I don't need glasses for reading. I just need glasses for long distance. So this is bothering me lately. Anyway, this chapter, chapter 19, non ejaculation. One of the confusions about ejaculation is that it is valued as a form of relaxation. But it is really a dissipation, a tremendous loss of energy, which results in fatigue or irritation rather than the refreshing quality typical of relaxation. Ancient Taoist principles whereby a man derives good health through living in harmony with the universe, embrace the phenomenon of non-ejaculation, retaining the semen in the body and reabsorbing the life force into longevity. Likewise, Tantra is interested in non-ejaculation, which is not to be confused with ejaculation control. Non-ejaculation means that the question of ejaculation rarely enters the picture. It is not even an issue because you are relaxing into it. This enables lovemaking to be prolonged and satisfying exchange. On the other hand, to control your ejaculation implies that a strong urge to ejaculate is present and it needs repressing. It then becomes an act of sheer will where the sex energy is first intentionally built up to a peak. And then mental control is exerted to retract from ejaculation. A woman then finds herself at the mercy of her partner when she cries out, stop. Don't move. This is devastating to say the least, when all she needed was that one last stroke to come. Many techniques exist today mistakenly in the name of Tantra, which are based on this idea of repeatedly controlling ejaculation, of dancing on the verge, of playing with the fire. But the results are less than pleasing as men complain of feelings of congestion and aches and pains in the groin and or testicles. It happens because the whole system is geared up for release and then stops, perhaps several times, as the energy is switched on and off, on and off, on and off. While this dancing with danger may give an immediate pleasure and high, or a feeling of vitality, frequently there is a corresponding low sometime later. A congested residue of tension in the genital and belly area remains and as a style of lovemaking. Eventually it may put stress on the prostate gland, 
causing discomfort and physical problems. The very word control implies attention. So ejaculation control cannot be a relaxing experience. The tension of the urgent ejaculation and the tension of controlling it with a mind created double tension. The delights of tantric lovemaking arise from a relaxing into the sex energy, a state of acceptance where nothing is forced. It focuses on an unhurried, gentle expansion of the sexual energy through relaxation and sensuality. And excitement and tension are not part of this picture. The genitals, through their own intelligence, the positive and negative polarities, challenge each other, which creates a natural sexual ecstasy. The sex organs begin to operate beneath excitement. And nothing is fixed beforehand. Nothing is guaranteed. Some days... It is electrical or totally riveting in intensity. In other days, there is a timeless or floating quality. In this kind of experience, ejaculation seems light years away. Orgasm and the ego. Unfortunately, both men and women have been programmed to identify their partners orgasm as pleasure that they themselves have been responsible for creating. And a man, particularly, feels that a woman's orgasms prove him to be more of a man, strengthening his sexual ego. But when he keeps a woman revolving around the superficial layer of her sexual energy by insisting that she come in order to satisfy himself, he limits his own sexual potential. That doorway to great transformation remains closed. Conversely, women really like their man to ejaculate even if they themselves do not manage to come. I have heard them say that they feel cheated if the man does not ejaculate, feeling that he is holding something back from them. Or, most common, they use it to finish off the sex act, since every woman knows exactly how to make her man ejaculate. This attitude reflects the woman's desire to control her man, to encourage him to lose his life-giving semen, and thereby his authority. It is her conditioning to try to run the show in her ignorance of her divine feminine power. The truth is, with the man becoming less identified with ejaculation, with it becoming less important to him, then the woman has a long-awaited opportunity to begin to make love with feminine receptivity and within her polarity. She's by nature relaxed and graceful. And she discovers a new sexual world far more pleasurable than that of hunting an orgasm. When she is authentic, she becomes orgasmic and glowing, the source of love. This can change her life and the life of her partner too. Naturally, the desire to ejaculate will come and go while you make love. But a desire is different from an overwhelming urge. Desire is still an idea in the mind, and the urge is a need of the body. If you are in that twilight zone where you are unable to relax during lovemaking because of a powerful or persistent urge to ejaculate, please allow it to happen. Ejaculate and remain present in your ejaculation. Enjoy it feeling every moment. Tantra suggests that when a man is struggling with himself, trying to keep his urges under control, it is healthier to ejaculate. Because fighting it will also cause a double tension. 
This tension is likely to persist as restlessness after making love and will appear again next time, creating a cycle of tension. Tantra encourages relaxation in both mind and body. So if the man must ejaculate, it is best to just do it. Then he will soon be able to start anew. As a man develops a new way of sensing his penis, at times he is likely to experience intense, unadulterated pleasure, especially during deep, sustained penetration. As the vaginal walls are being awakened with love and consciousness, the intensity of the experience is so overwhelming that it almost reminds him of excitement and the temptation to move with it and go for it will arise. However, men have found that if they really feel into the pen penis, beneath his veneer of excitement, the sensations are of a distinctly different quality. The source of tremendous satisfaction as the male posit positive energy starts to move through the woman for the first time. So, when the temptations of ejaculation appear, it is often well worth it to remain relaxed and keep it to a non-ejaculation. How do you feel afterward? As you begin to experiment with and without orgasms and ejaculation, be guided by how you feel in the minutes and hours afterward. As I began to experiment with orgasms and my lover's ejaculation, sometimes going for it, sometimes not, I began to observe how I felt afterward and not during, but later, even much later. This provided valuable information and I discovered that I experienced greater well-being when I had not forced an orgasm, when apparently nothing had happened. For men too, these questions are a valuable gu guideline. How do you feel when you do? And how do you feel when you don't? Your experience will give you all the answers. It is your most significant teacher. Key points in this chapter. As a man relaxes, the powerful urge for ejaculation decreases gradually. Non-ejaculation is not to be confused with ejaculation control. The first implies relaxation and the other tension. Controlling the urge for ejaculation suppresses the energy with possible congesting effects. Non-ejaculation increases vitality and creativity. was interesting, don't you think? Some bits I didn't know there. <laughs> really, really interesting. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this reading. I wish you an amazing night if you're about to sleep. And I hope you have sweet dreams. See you in the next one.